Hello YouTube people. Today we're going to take a look at how to set up two Tesla wall connectors in a load sharing configuration. So in my garage I have uh, run a line that gets here so this means I'm going to have to install some conduit and if you look at the garage overall it's a two car garage with a third car on the side um, and I want to get a wall connector on this side to service a vehicle in this position but also one on this side to service the vehicle on the other side and the load balancing will just be useful because uh, as you pull both cars in I don't want to want to just be able to plug it in and forget about it and uh, have either of them charge as quickly as possible but also you know, not have to disconnect one to charge the other and just, just plug them in at the end of the day, go and come back and they'll both be charged. You can unplug them independently. So <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, things to consider with this setup. Um, first of all, I'm going with, uh, the first is how much power do you have at the location? So I'm using wires that would support up to a 48 amp charge on a 60 amp breaker. However, uh, my breaker configuration, I, I have GE thin, and the maximum amperage I can get in the spaces I have available is a 50 amp breaker. So I'm gonna be doing this a 40 amp load balanced charging configuration. So each of those devices should never, between the two of them, exceed 40 amps. So uh, you'll want to use uh, number six, uh, THHN wire um, <clears throat> to be able to handle this but one thing to note is uh, this this neutral will be capped off we won't be using the neutral we don't need to but the ground is a uh, I believe it's a number 10 uh, which should be sufficient for grounding this application as long as it's under the 60 amps so that is what you will need the other thing you'll need for the signal wire is actually super hard to find. So I had to buy this roll to get it. It's supposed to be shielded 18 gauge twisted pair uh, to do the signaling between the two wall connectors. So um, I was able to find this at Lowe's, but uh, they don't carry anything like it at Home Depot um, that has the jacket with it, you know, with the shielded connector. So. I, I hope that's actually necessary. I've heard some people have used just Cat5 to do that, but I'm actually going to be uh, spanning uh, probably, it, you're only supposed to go 49 feet on this signal wire. I'll probably be close to 40, so I want to use the exact right specification wire to be able to be compliant. Um, also, because I'm doing <clears throat> uh, 50 amp, anything over 60 amp needs to have a cutoff switch in the garage, but since I'm installing it in this manner, I do not need a cutoff switch. Um, so, but once again, this whole this whole video is, is subject to your own local laws and restrictions and electrical codes. So, uh, don't take my word for it. Uh, don't take my word for anything you're going to see on this video. Um, but what we're going to end up doing is putting a junction box on the wall there and running conduit up and over and out to each of the two locations. So it should be up and out of the way from the ceiling and then we'll just have drops to those to those locations and hopefully it works out well. I will show you the other bits of pieces that I've put together. I've got a conduit box, conduit, um, fish tape, extra wire for running through the fish tape, all sorts of elbows and conduit. I chose to do one inch conduit just because I figured it would be easier to route the wires. And if I ever wanted to upgrade to like a 100 amp service at some point, that could be a possibility. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the, uh, the junction box mounted into place and also the Tesla wall connector box is mounted into place to start being able to assemble the conduit. So let's go from there. 
Okay, I now have the junction box installed and next thing I'm gonna do is use this uh, grounding bar kit and ground the ground wire here so we have a place to terminate. Now we're gonna start installing the conduit. So we have these conduit connectors put through strap into place. Alright, so now I've molded a piece of conduit there and strapped it. It needs a few more straps, but I'm just building out the conduit to go up to my kind of a center junction box and then do the two wings out to the other side. Okay, I've got the conduit along the ceiling and then I've got this junction box up here. The point of the junction box is you only have 49 feet to connect the two uh, wall connectors so I'm gonna have to do a little pass through there to pass the data connection from that wall connector up and over to this wall connector. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna thread uh, two sets of wires for each uh, wall connector down to tap into the power uh, and then each of the runs to each of the wall connectors I'll do after the fact. So now I've bundled the two sets of wires and we're pulling it through with the fish tape on the bottom. Okay, so now I'm installing the uh, adapter for top conduit on the Tesla wall connector. I found a hole using a stud finder and drilled a pilot hole and I'll get this mounted on the wall and pop the conduit top off and connect it to my conduit system on the ceiling. So to cut the conduit after I measure, I'm just using this little pipe cutting tool and what you do is you loosen it up and put it exactly on your point and then tighten it down a bit and then you just spin the whole thing and it creates a line Let's see if I can... so it slowly starts cutting the pipe like that and I'll have to use two hands to finish this off but uh, you get the idea. Okay so now all the conduit is placed. Power leading up to that junction box. One side of the power down to wall connector one. Other conduit leading to wall connector two. And <clears throat> so I've got the uh, data cable still on a spool that I sent down that conduit and now I just have to strap it to the power wires make sure I have enough length cut it off and send it down to the other side and that way we'll have the data wire between the two wall connectors okay all the <clears throat> wires is are run through the conduit and I'm gonna now cut and strip these wires and put into the terminals along here. I think I'll probably cut them a little bit below, an inch or two below, uh, just so in case I make any mistakes I've got a little play uh, to re-strip it if I need to. So uh, let's go from there. So I strip this screw with just some pliers and I loosen the bolt and then we're going to drop it down in there and then we'll tighten that up we should be good to go okay now that the wall connectors are connected <clears throat> we're back in the junction box and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ground the incoming wire and then I'll ground the two greens to it as well. And then I've, what I've got here is a, called it a Polaris connector. And it should just make uh, connecting all these wires just a little bit easier. Uh, basically this 
red wire will go in there and well all three red wires will enter here and be clamped down together should make this junction really easy and simple so uh, and the white wire we used to have a NEMA 1450 right here we're just going to cap that right white right wire right off and not even use it so we don't need it okay so there we have it we can now close this junction panel up um, and continue on to the wall connector installation okay so got my wire inside got the ground inside my L1 and L2 first thing I'm going to do is leave myself a generous length to be able to hit these terminals and ground the wire as well on the back so I'm going to cut this right here <coughs> And one thing you'll notice is this has, it's actually, is a, it's two wires, but it has a, has a grounding wire as well. So let's cut that back fairly far. And now we should have this little grounding wire that can ground with that, the, the regular ground, and then we have our data connection wires. So we'll go from there. So I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, we've got the little wire going to ground and our red and black in the data out side of the port. So now we'll land L1 and L2 and this side should be good and we'll do this exact same configuration on the other side other than we'll set the dials differently okay over on the uh, slave side wall connector you can see we're going in the in ports we've grounded our cable to ground we've got L1 L2 lined up correctly this dial is set to F which puts it in slave mode and on the other side, we'll set the master one to 40 amps. because That's what we would like. And we'll test the voltages and we should be good to go. Okay, so here's an overview of the final install. Got a nice little junction box up there. Going up to the top of the garage. Nice little junction box there that goes on over to the wall and the other side here this is the slave side and this is the master side so when you first turn on the uh, give when you first charge the circuit if you've done it correctly, you'll see the master side will glow the first five seconds with a green on top and on bottom, while the slave will just show one. So I was able to flip that breaker on and verify, yep, we've got two lights on this side and everything's working great. Thanks for watching this video. If uh, you enjoyed it, if it helped you out, consider using my Tesla referral code. Um, and... As always, I'll leave uh, some description on the parts that I used, um, Amazon links to some of the connectors and parts that I used uh, to do this setup. And if you have any questions, uh, comments, concerns, post in the comments there. Um, I'd like to keep this open, like if anyone sees anything I've done wrong or anything they do differently, I would definitely appreciate the feedback um, because, you know, there's a lot of people who are probably looking to do this setup, and if I've done something wrong, go ahead and correct me. Um, but uh, I'm pretty sure I did a lot of research and made sure I used the right thickness of wire, uh, followed all the best practices for conduit and for installing these things. So, anyways, uh, hope this is useful to everyone, and I will talk to you later.